coach, you guys are nearing the end of the first week of practice. Uh, tell me what you've seen so far from your offense. It's it's been uh, I've been really excited so far. You know, we're three days in, and uh, I, I think that our young men came back from uh, from spring throughout the off season and uh, had a lot of retention. Uh, you know, we've challenged them with our install and really kind of uh, ramping it up from the spring. Uh, I've really been uh, satisfied with their retention, but then also their, their willingness to, to kind of stack load and, and get things done. And, uh, but then also you can see that um, they, they put a lot of work in this offseason. Uh, we have some guys that, that honestly over the course of the last three months, uh, three plus months, have done a great job physically in, uh, in the weight room and also out here running. And uh, so we look, uh, we look different in some spots and that's uh, extremely encouraging as a coach. That's one of the things that everyone talked about uh, first day of practice, just the, the attention to detail, the focus. Yeah. A lot of people said it was probably the best off season they've had, and yeah. you've obviously seen the results. So what have you seen just over the first three days uh, that's different just from last year, last year being the first spring? Yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing is, is this, is um, our guys, uh, they, they understand what the expectation is. Um, and I would say this uh, probably more so than anything else is that uh, our guys have done a great job. Uh, kind of transitions transition in the uh, offseason into a player-led offseason you know a player-led team and and seeing guys really step up from a leadership perspective uh, we had some guys do that last season but i think the overall emphasis from the staff and trying to encourage that throughout the uh, the offseason back um, after the season during spring and then this last period of offseason uh, you, you see the results of that and you can uh, kind of feel that and i think that's uh, that's extremely encouraging especially heading into the season Go ahead and walk around the offense. Let's talk about your quarterbacks. What have you seen from that group so far? And from your perspective, that's your group. Yeah. Stood out to you so far. Well, I think the biggest thing is is that uh, we've carried over our performance from the spring to, to fall camp. And uh, and I believe we've taken a step forward with that. Even more comfortability on a, just a play to play by pay, play uh, case. But then also just uh, you know just uh, an understanding. I mean, they've, they've done a great job of uh, studying and, and just asking questions. And, and you can see the results of that. And, uh, you know, so there was, uh, you know, today we had a couple missed throws, but it, but it wasn't by assignment. It was, it was as soon as we made a decision and made the wrong decision, we understood that. So that's, that's part of the growth process, playing quarterback. You're never not going to throw an interception. It's part of the process. Talk about your running backs, too. I mean, you got some good depth there. Justin returning. To yeah. Todd seems like he's taking some steps forward. But Absolutely. You got a lot of new guys out there yeah. as well. Just tell me a little bit about that group. Well, uh, Dinka looks different. Uh, he really does, and he was the second team all conference performer last season. And, and so I'm, I know not only myself, but this, this entire staff and this entire team is really excited about where he's at. Uh, I really believe T. Hodge today is a significantly different player than he was T. Hodge a year ago this time. And, uh, and, and then even from the spring. And uh, that's, a, that's encouraging. And uh, so I know we're really excited about that. Uh, I think Corbin Allen's done a great job through three days, uh, just kind of picking him uh, right up where he left off in the spring, which is awesome. And uh, the one thing that I would say about Plez Lawrence is that I, I do believe he's probably made the biggest jump from spring to now. Um, and a lot of that is just comfortability, but then also just knowledge. I mean, he, he, he really has, you can tell he's done a lot, a lot this summer just trying to study and trying to uh, immerse himself in the playbook and uh, just trying to be, be more comfortable. And, you know, he's a sophomore. He's not a freshman anymore. And there's a, you know, that's where guys make the biggest jump from a, just a just a day to day and, and, and feeling like a football player in college. It's a big transition. So he, you can tell he's transitioning well right now. One of the questions that people have is who's going to be the next Dante Hendricks? Who's the one who's going to step up from a wide receiver perspective? A lot of people haven't looked at the stats and realized that there was a good balance of guys behind him that yeah. had 20, 15, 20, 25 catches. Yeah. Just talk about the receivers and what you're expecting from that group this year. Well, I, I'm going to be, I'll be really disappointed um, if we're not better overall as a wide receiver unit than what we were last year. And, uh, and, and that's nothing to knock Dante Hendricks. I, Dante Hendricks had a year of eligibility left. I, I'd take it back in a heartbeat. But it's, uh, it's, it's because all those guys have improved. Um, Kevin Barnett's 210 pounds. Uh, you know, uh, Harry Van Dyne looks great. I mean, he's playing better than what he did the last six games of the season. I felt like he was playing at an all-conference level at that point in time. Uh, Dakota Caton is a, is a completely different player today than he was last season. Coming off the ACL, uh, I feel like he was kind of uh, at times kind of maybe being a little hesitant. Uh, later in the season, he had some big plays, but now you're seeing it every rep, every single day. And, and you can keep on going on and on. Ethan Chambers looks different. Um, you know, we're, we're a much better receiver group overall than we were last year at this time, and that's really encouraging. When you look at the tight ends, you look at the mules, you got 6'4", 250, 6'4", 240, 6'4", yeah. 250, 6'5", 250. I mean, that's a big old group out yeah. there. What, uh, just what do they bring to the team just from an emphasis from the run game? Obviously, they're big yeah. and they're going to be huge with that. 
but also from the receiving game, you had some guys that put up some good numbers in the air last year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I look at the tight end as a as, as a weapon, and uh, here the uh, the JAs do a great job of uh, uh, of really studying, being involved, and in, and in, in, in really showing on a day to day that they care and love about love football. Uh, it's a great group to be around. Uh, I'm excited about them as a group uh, because I believe that we can do a lot of things uh, personnel-wise with those guys because I think they have a great skill set. Uh, they complement each other really well. And um, I, I know this, that I can trust those guys to do whatever I ask them to do because they're going to make sure that they know exactly what the details are, are of the uh, particular concept, particular run play. And they're going to go out and execute because they, they love football and they want to play. And uh, So it's, uh, it's fun. We've got, a, we got four or five guys there that uh, I'm really encouraged with and looking forward to this season with. The offense goes as far as the offensive line will take it. When you look at those guys up front, uh, just talk about Coach Funk's bunch and what they've done this year to improve on last year's numbers. Well, I think uh, the biggest thing is, is you see those guys, they, they've really bought into this offseason. Uh, I think some of them really bought into to a leadership responsibility and, and a role. Uh, but then also, I think that they're playing much better today. And, and I was really satisfied with them in the spring. I, I felt like we had phenomenal growth from game 11 through, through practice 15 in the spring. And uh, I think they've continued that trend. And, and, and you can see that the offseason program has been with, really well with those guys. Uh, start, you know, Carter Herring and, and uh, you know, Keegan Trost at tackle. Uh, they're different players than they were. And you know, Keegan Trost, I thought, had a, had a great season last year. I, I'm excited about him. I think his season this year is going to be, it's hard to have a quote unquote a special season for a tackle because it doesn't show up in the stat book, but I'm really excited for him to have a special season. And you know, when Jose Vasquez looks different, uh, he, he looks better, he looks stronger, he looks more athletic. And it, and it really, I think it's that, that last, last year, that senior year, putting everything you have into it, and he has. And the same thing could be said about Carter Herring. Carter Herring's coming out here and playing with uh, supreme confidence, uh, confidence that we're, we're excited about. Uh, you know, when you watch the film over the last two days, you don't, you don't see mistakes that maybe you've seen him in the past, and there's a little bit more attention to detail. And, you know, so that, that gets you excited. And we've got a bunch of inside guys that are battling out for the left guard in the uh, center spot, Griffin Comer and uh, James Prince and uh, Alex Tote. Mike Ross has been a little bit banged up. He'll be back. Uh, you know, Logan Bartley's coming along. So we've got, we've got a group of guys that, that I know that we're looking forward to. We've got more depth probably than what we had last season, which is encouraging. And uh, I'm looking forward to them. With three days in the practice right now, obviously you're going to start putting more over the next couple of days, get ready yeah. for next week's scrimmage, then get ready for that over on the 31st. Just from your perspective, what are two or three things that you guys still need to work on to get ready for those next steps? Oh boy, we got a long way to go. You know, it's uh, you know, I think you, as a coach, you get so immersed in the uh, the install, making sure you get you you get your your menu in, and, and you know, by practice five, you know, we'll have uh, probably ninety percent of the things that we'll run next season in, and. Uh, you know, that 10% will be, you know, situational thing. So for me, it's just getting, getting it in, getting the reps needed in. And, uh, you know, some of those will be walkthrough reps, some of them will be practice reps. But uh, I'm looking forward to just getting everything in. And then all of a sudden, those night meetings that we've been installing are now, let's review the film, let's study ourselves, let's study our technique and uh, making it a little bit more learnable and not just force feeding these guys through a uh, fire hose. But now let's sit back and let's have a sip of a tea as opposed to a fire hose drink, you know, and, and just uh, learn and, and, and really study it and, uh, and, and take that step back and, and, and reflect, but then also, you know, keep on driving forward. So that's what I'm looking forward to, because I think once you get the install done, because these first five days, six, seven days, whenever you, you know, how coaches do it, those first couple days are a grind when it comes to the install, because you know, by practice three, and you saw a little bit out here today, you see some young guys kind of swimming. And, uh, you know, and I, I get it. They were running one formation in two plays in high school, and we probably installed nine, ten concepts, you know, in the pass game, let alone the run game. And so we just got to get, the, get it slowed down a little bit for those guys.